Well, hello again, everyone. More or less, hello. I'm back, although you can't tell it because I'm still not on camera. I I can only give the same excuse I gave last time. Giant zit. Uh, so embarrassing. I have the worst skin, I swear. Well, maybe not the worst, but it takes a long time for it to heal up whenever there's anything major. And I do have a skin condition, which causes me to sometimes get giant zits and I digress. You get the idea. I'll be back on camera when I can, and then you'll have to put up with my face. So consider this a break. Today's video is all about the difference between a certain book and a certain uh, miniseries that was made of that book. I'm going to start with the book. It is a decently popular novel by quite a well-known modern author. It is, drumroll please, da -da 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 -da, The City and the City by China? I think it's pronounced China? Mieville. Mie yes, China Mieville. This is a library edition, and it is 512 pages, published 2009 by Del Rey Books. First, a bit about the author. China Mieville uh, was born in 1972 in Norwich, England. He is a spec fic writer and a literary critic. He terms what he writes as weird fiction. He's won many awards, including a Hugo and an Arthur C. Clarke Award. He's also a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature. He's active in politics and is known for standing for his beliefs, and he holds dual citizenship in the United States and Britain. He also has degrees in social anthropology and international law. He plans to write a novel in every genre. Also, he does a lot of role-playing, to the extent that the fifth edition of Dungeons & Dragons, The Player's Handbook, claimed his book Perdido Street Station as inspiration. His latest work is The Book of Elsewhere, co-written with Keanu Reeves. Okie doke, on to The City and the City. Here's a rundown of the basic plot of the book. The book is about the twin cities of somewhere in Eastern Europe, of Bejel and Olkoma. These cities are kind of like Western and Eastern Berlin in that they are right butt up next to each other, but they are separated. They are not separated by a physical wall. They are joining and in parts overlapping, and they are separated by, I don't know if you call it a metaphysical wall, maybe a psychological well, the idea is that the citizens of each city are directed from birth, pretty much, to unsee the other city. So from long practice, the citizens of each city do not, they are aware of each other's existence, certainly, but they do not acknowledge the other's existence even in the parts where the cities are right next to each other, like you have adjoining lanes of traffic or something like that, or people walking on opposite sides of a street. But they will not acknowledge that the other side of the street exists. Both cities jealously guard their borders. It is difficult to get into, out of, or between the cities. If any citizen is shown to overtly acknowledge the existence of the other city, that's when Breach will step in. Both cities have their own police, but the police only take care of the issues in each city and themselves do not acknowledge the other city. If any citizen is caught directly acknowledging the other city, like staring at someone, as that's all they have to do, or crossing a border, that's when Breach steps in. Breach is kind of like a secret police. The members of Breach, you don't know who they are until it's too late and they take you and you're gone. And that is how the cities manage to coexist. Now the basic plot of the book. Tyador Borlu, a cop in Bejel, and Corwi his second in command, uh, investigate the death of Mahalia Giri. 
Mahalia was an American student visiting Olkoma. She was there on a dig, an archaeological dig. Her body was found in Bejul. So Borlu has to figure out how her body got there and who killed her and why. Her parents visit and identify her. Her father attempts to investigate and breaches. Borlu is given approval to go to Olkoma and join the police there. Now, the Alcoma Archaeological Dig is uh, being headed up by a university. Bejel has also found some artifacts on their side, but they've done a lot of selling off of them and have basically haven't taken care of them. Alcoma is trying to not repeat that mistake. The archaeological artifacts being turned up are from the history before either of the cities. This history is murky and lost to time, and nobody really knows anything about the artifacts that are being turned up. Now, Mahalia was engaged in her own investigation at Transpires. She was trying to find evidence of Orsini. Orsini is a supposed third city in and between the other two and unseen by both. The theory stems from the blackballed novel Between the City and the City by David Bowden, uh, who has since disavowed his own work. It was popular at the time and sh shot off a lot of conspiracy theories, which neither city liked, so the novel was pretty much banned. So in Alcoma, Borlu and his counterpart there, Dot, who is a male policeman, or militia, uncover what turns out to be a plot by a Bejel politician to use Mahalia's belief in Orsini to trick her into procuring the older technologies from the dig to give to him so he can turn around and sell them to a big business from America. Now, when Mahalia realized she was being used in this way and that Orsini really didn't exist, they killed her. In the process of the investigation, Borlu attempts to protect and transport Mahalia's friend Yolanda Rodriguez uh, from Olcoma to Bejel. But in the process of the checkpoint crossing, uh, Yolanda is killed by a sniper from the Bejel side, who then disappears into Bejel. Still being in Olcoma, Borlu cannot go after him, so he heads back into Olcoma, pursues the attacker by seeing him while unseeing him, then finally goes ahead and shoots him. He shoots him across the border, which is an act of breach. Breach seizes Borlu and takes him prisoner, but then they end up uh, questioning him and using what he knows, allowing him to proceed in his investigation, to finally track down the real mastermind behind it all, who turns out to be David Bowden. Borlu confronts Bowden in the street as Bowden tries to flee the cities in plain yet hidden sight. Having been involved in both cities and a student of both for some time, Bowden is able to adopt a gate and a sort of costume, I guess, uh, dress. He is able to dress in a way that attracts attention but doesn't attract attention from citizens of both cities because he doesn't seem to belong to either one. Yet he seems to belong to either one enough that he's not breaching. Bowden does have a weapon, but Borlu manages to talk down and disarm him and take him prisoner. Then Borlu cannot go back to his old life, and he begins a new one working for Breach. That is the end of the novel. Now, let's look at the miniseries. The miniseries is a four-part TV show by Mammoth Screen made for BBC Two. It stars David Morrissey, who U.S. people may know from uh, seasons four and five of The Walking Dead. He's been in a lot of other stuff. There's also Mandeep Dillon, uh, from the show Afterlife, among many other things. If you haven't seen Afterlife, it's, oh, it's so heartbreaking. It's that Ricky Gervais one that's been on Netflix for a couple of years. Um, it's a couple seasons, and it's about a guy who's grieving his dead wife, and it, oh, it's a really hard look at grief, and oh my goodness, it's funny, you know, but it's also sad and uh, just the end where he's walking across the field and up that little hill. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, I need a minute. 
Okay, sorry. Anyway, <clears throat> there are a couple of other people of interest in the cast. Corey Johnson, who <laughs> took me forever to remember who this guy was. He was in The Mummy. Remember him? There's also Morfid Clark, I think I'm pronouncing that right, of the new uh, Rings of Power series on Prime. Most notably, I think there is Laura Pulver, who portrayed Irene Adler on Sherlock. More about her character in a minute. Now, the series follows Borloo in much the same way as the book. Mahalia Giri, um, following Orsini, there's the Diagonal Coma. There's the differences between the two cities and Breach, who keeps them all in line. Uh, the technologies and architecture in the series are particularly accurate to how they're described in the novel. Uh, Bejul technologically and architecturally is behind Olcoma. There's a city hall that straddles the line of both cities and functions as a crossing between either one. The crossing attempt scene is fairly accurate to that of the book. Now, the cinematography is interesting. It does a more than ample job at portraying the perspective of a citizen of one of the cities, pushing anything that they might unsee out of focus. Reflections are also a heavy motif. They portray the duality, which is also evident in the characters, as well as their surroundings. Now, the focus or unfocus also comes into play during scenes of conversations and such like. It's meant to play up the murkiness of character intentions, but as a result, it becomes kind of overused and gets a little annoying. The major changes to the plot include uh, Olcoma's Militia Dot as being female, uh, although she still lives with her partner Yalia. There was some interesting changes in casting. Uh, Professor Isabel Natsi, a Canadian who is in charge of the dig, becomes Professor Mona Olnati. I'm not sure why they changed the name. The character of Yolanda is Yolanda Rodriguez in the book, but in the miniseries, that's uh, who Morfid Clark plays, um, who I guess didn't necessarily look like a Rodriguez, so they changed her character to Yolanda Stark. Again, I'm not sure why the change, why they didn't cast somebody who was a Rodriguez, but uh, David Bowden is a somewhat younger man than portrayed in the novel. Other changes include the sections of the cities in the book. Some of them somewhat overlap. Some of them are cross-hatched and kind of belong to both cities. So citizens can travel, citizens from either city can travel in those sections, but they have to unsee each other and manage to avoid each other. If this exists in the series, it's not obvious. There are some other changes, like the dig entrance is underground. There's a lot of underground scenes in the miniseries and not so much in the book. Um, there's also an, the American company that the Bejo politician is selling to is given more prominence in the series. More major changes include Borlu sneaking into the dig entrance with assistance from another student. That scene is entirely not in the book. Uh, there's a scene where Corwi goes and pokes around the lobby of the American company um, before she's kicked out because the unscrupulous head of the company, the one who it turns out has been buying stuff, is keeping an eye on her. Uh, Borlu does breach in the manner depicted by shooting over the line of the cities, but his pursuit of David Bowden also takes place underground, Bowden is armed as in the book, but he assaults Borlu by stabbing him. Borlu almost dies, but Breach finds him in time and apprehends Bowden. The Breach character of Ashel is non-existent and has been replaced by Corwi, who was secretly a member of Breach this entire time. I found that a little hard to swallow. <laughs> now to the biggest change from the book. Borlu had two girlfriends, I guess it's a loose term, like it's implied that he meets up with these ladies for casual, you know, intimate relations, but I mean, he might also meet them for a cup of coffee, I don't know. 
they have been replaced with his wife, Katrinia Perla, who has been missing for quite some time since the beginning of the series when we pick it up. This is the character portrayed by the absolute luminous Laura Pulver. Now, his wife Perla was also a devotee of Bowdoin, and um, she also tended to, um, I don't know if it's depression or, but she had indications of wanting to end her own life. Um, she and Borlu become close. They meet on a uh, meeting when both of them are heading from Bejel to Alcoma, and they are in the city hall, or what you will, uh, attending a class on how to adjust to Alcoma when in Alcoma. When they are in Alcoma, she does jump off a bridge and Borlu saves her. Then they get even closer and end up getting married when they go back to Bejel. Now, David Bowden is kind of an old flame of hers, and he's seen as a rival in Borlu's flashbacks. She was convinced of Orsini's existence, and she disappeared one day, perhaps while going in search of it. In the end, however, it is revealed that she realized Orsini was a lie, and she once again attempted to end her own life while in a coma, and this time she was successful. Yes, his wife. Um... Mm. she's not in here. Okay, so there you have it. The City and the City. The book and the series. Uh, both of them are interesting in their own way. Both of them have their points. Uh, as I said, <laughs> there are heavy similarities and some quite big differences. I'm not quite sure why they made those differences. I'm thinking it's to, you know, give you more depth to Borlu's character. But yes, I hope I have filled you in enough to uh, spark some interest. Do go check them out. And as for me, I'm going to go heal my face some more. So maybe next week I'll get to actually see ya and you me. And you can run away screaming to the hills if you, <laughs> if you will. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. I have to live with my face. So I will go live with my face for another week. And I will see you more or less, hopefully, next week. In the meantime, um, do comment below if you have read this book, if you have seen the miniseries, or if you have any suggestions for other books to film or what have you that I could check out. I am very interested to hear what you have to say. In any case, I will see you next week. Thank you for putting up with my odd little interim videos like this. Have a good one, everyone. Bye.